lifetime. One out of 2.8 women will get cancer in a lifetime. Every 25 seconds, one of us dies of heart disease. This doesn't happen in nature. So the reason all this is happening is because we have strayed. We have lost our way. So now we're living in boxes. We all got here in a machine, and then we're going to go home and look at machines. We're going to purchase our food from machines. And every once in a while, we might say, let's go out to the country to get close to nature. Well, what's this? You can't get any closer. You're sitting in it. So, now, you grow up. If there's anything on this planet that you can call yours, and it's not really yours because you're just borrowing it, it's your body. How many people know how to take care of their body? You know, Paracelsus is called the, the father of modern medicine. But he was much more than that. And he's really not the fa father of modern medicine at all. He would vomit if he knew what modern medicine turned out to be. But anyway, he said, the person who's not their own physician by the age of 40 is a fool. Okay. So the best we can do to our beloved fellow creatures on this planet is teach them how not to be fools anymore. And the only way we can do that is to live it. And I go to conferences and I see my fellow alternative doctors eating <laughs> abysmally. I will not eat with them. I will not sit with them. I am appalled. And every time I come to them, I can't believe they're still, al still alive. Wow. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I know I, I don't have long here to talk, um, but, but what I wanted to remind you all is that we, there's a really good, important book you might want to read called The China Study by T. Colin Campbell. It sort of ends the debate on those who still think there's a debate. Please read it. Okay, but um, T. Colin Campbell. Dr. Campbell. He's a PhD professor emeritus from Cornell University and it's based on 25-30 years of NIH granted research. Cornell, Oxford University and then a Chinese university. But that's one of many and anyway once the light goes on and you realize that we're part of nature you'll realize it is all this makes sense. If I, if I were to give you the talk I give each patient, at the end of the talk you would say, I already knew all that. Of course we already know that. We know the truth. We're at home with the truth. When you learned how to count to ten and then someone said, by the way, one plus one is two, you went, of course, yeah, of course. You know, but if someone's up here pointing and they've got all kinds of explanations and you're scratching your head, it's not true. The truth is simple. It's simple. And so complex, we'll never understand it. Now, I've, I lived in Hawaii for 15 years. I've been to the Himalayas, through the forests. I've been to Costa Rica. I've been to Vanuatu. Uh, where else? Many jungles around the world. I've never seen supplement trees or vitamin trees anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. There are no lycopene trees, but there are tomatoes. And the tomatoes are, not only there, is there lycopene, but there's beta carotene, there's fiber, there's uh, vitamin C, and there's minerals. And they're all woven together in the most incredible, incredibly divine way that we'll never, ever, ever figure it out. And guess what? You don't need to. Just eat it. One other thing that's very important in this is to understand what, what is nature's cure? What do all animals do when they're sick? They stop eating. They stop eating. They might, you know, and, and remember all animals who are plugged into nature through, uh, uh, through uh, instinct are all herbalists. So they'll go and they'll eat the, pro the right herb that's not part of their diet to either vomit or get diarrhea and then they'll lie down and heal. Healing comes from within. Fasting. There's not one spiritual leader that didn't fast. Okay, and anyone who has gotten any, any bit of health must have fasted. And so, anyway, what I'd like to say is, I have nine minutes left, is that what that is?
right? Okay. Um, what I'd like to say is, let's try to figure out where we fit in nature, okay? Because uh, unlike dogs, we, we can't fit, you know, we have to try and think about it. Okay. Where we fit in nature is simply that we are mammals, and mammals have four qualities which distinguish them from non-mammals. We are warm-blooded, we have hair or fur, our babies are born alive, not in eggs, and we have mammary glands to produce milk. This is a mammal. There are some weird ones, extreme ones called monotremes and other ones, but for the most part, that's what a mammal is. And there are two basic mammals, two groups of mammals. Okay, one, groups have, one group has vertically moving jaws, acidic saliva, short digestive tracts, um, and they pant. When they, eat, when they eat, they chase another animal, they break its ne neck, they rip open its abdomen, and they eat the organs, pancreas, rectum, a liver, kidneys, blood, uh, heart, lungs. They chew the eyeballs. They luxuriate in the gore, and they're called carnivores. If I handed anyone in this room a chicken, you would not rip its head off and eat it alive, and neither would your grandparents or their grandparents or their grandparents or their grandparents, because we simply are not carnivores. New York Museum of Natural History, anyone ever been there in Manhattan? If you go to it and you go to the carnivore section, the only place you find humans is on this side of the ropes, okay? All right. Can we get away with it? Sure. Can we smoke? Sure. Can we shoot heroin? Sure. <laughs> Are we going to achieve optimal functioning? No way. Optimal functioning is the only definition of health. Okay. We were all fitted for optimal functioning for health by nature. All animals, I mean eagles, we have no idea what the optimal functioning of a human is. Einstein used 8% of his brain. There are guys in... Uh, uh, Vilcabamba, Machu Picchu, Abkhazia, Georgia. We're fathering children at the age of 110. We have people here at 35 asking for Viagra. Okay, so we have no idea what optimal functioning of a human is, but we're far from it. One out of two and a half of us in this room will, die, will get cancer in our lifetime. That's sad. That's tragic. And what's even more tragic is 98% of you will go out of this room and plant some more seeds. One of the, anyway, so there's that group of mammals and there's, okay, now the, the, those carnivores, there's something akin to a carnivore, it's a cousin, it's called a scavenger. These are hyenas and jackals, they like to eat corpses, much like you and I, right? The only difference between them and us is that these uh, hyenas and jackals still have instinct. And so they don't eat the corpse after 72 hours. We being devoid of instinct, we slaughter a, an animal and it gets stiff. We can't eat it, we'll break our teeth. So we hang it up for 96 hours and allow it to decay. But we don't call it decay, we call it aging. Just like we call it, don't call it, we call it health insurance instead of disease insurance. We call it life insurance instead of death insurance. We do all those things, that's what we do. We're really good at fooling ourselves, aren't we? The truth is it's a decayed corpse. So we take this piece of decayed corpse home. Can you eat it? No, you stick it in the oven. Pull it out of the oven, can you eat it? No, you put salt, pepper, and A1 steak sauce on it. So, we not only do not eat the food of the carnivore, we do not eat the food of the scavenger, we eat the food of the maggot. Can't imagine why we get sick, can you? Now, listen, the other group of, the other group of mammals is called our elephants, rhinos, hippos, giraffes, horses, cows, gorillas, bonobos. Jaws move horizontally as well as vertically, full cheeks, full lips, alkaline saliva, long digestive tracts, and we don't pant except on honeymoons. We sweat. <laughs> okay, so, um, boy, my time's running out. Um, anyway, this group was designed by nature for a plant-based diet. Even if you don't want that to be true, it's true. Even if you don't want to step, even if you don't want to believe, if you